Hey everybody, welcome back to GR Research where we're doing another upgrade. First though, before I get into the upgrades, let me say to all you guys, uh, thank you for besieging us with all the orders we've been getting, especially all those orders on the new desktop mini. We've had well over a hundred and something of those uh, ordered from us already. Thank you very much. Uh, we are waiting on things as usual. I mean, we're, we're constantly blowing through raw materials as fast as we can get them in. We're ordering everything they've got and everything everybody else has. And we're still waiting on some resistors. We've got more caps coming. We've got more inductors coming. We're waiting on more NQ drivers to get here to do some of the um, NX models. But it's the moment that stuff arrives, orders are going out the door. We've got orders packed, lined up with notes, waiting what it's waiting for. And a lot of orders we have everything we need and they're going out the door really quickly so some things are coming in and out pretty quick or pretty quickly some things are taking a little time uh, i've been limited on the time i've had to spend doing upgrades which is something i enjoy doing and a lot of that is piled up a little bit but i am hitting it and working through it and getting some of them done this is another one that was sent to us this is a pretty nice little speaker it's a new yamo and I say Yamo, I've been saying Jamo. Uh, this is the model, let's see here, it's the model C803. And the thing I liked about this thing is the cabinets were pretty nice and the drivers are pretty nice. It's got a really nice little dome tweeter. It's kind of horn loaded, uh, silk dome. The woofer had a lot of breakup up at the top of the range, but nothing that affected it within the range that it was playing. So um, nice looking drivers uh crossover though eek um this one isn't even built on a circuit board this one it's not even point to point wired the connections are just dropped into little solder spots to make the connection um iron core inductor on the woofer circuit electrolytic caps there's a sand cast resistor there's one poly cap probably on the tweeter circuit with this little bitty inductor here that's the little dental floss gauge it's tiny so um they put the money where they wanted it on the cabinet so it looks good to the eye uh to the ear though there's some stuff holding this one back quite a bit and yeah some ferromagnetic screws and pretty cheesy binding post so um how well did they engineer this thing actually pretty good let's look at some measurements i'm gonna try and get uh, Ron to throw some of these up in kind of a split screen again. We're going to look at some before and afters because I did not change this very much. The guys who engineered this did a pretty good job. So I went in and designed a network that m really measured very similar to what they had. I smoothed it out just a little, brought the tweeter level down to where it's a little bit more balanced and kept it simple and it measures really, really well. And with the upgrade package that I've put together, the parts quality is going to shoot way up and the performance is going to shoot way up. It's going to sound a lot better than it did. So let's look at some before and afters and let's look at just first the on-axis frequency response. And if you look at the before and after, you'll see both are really smooth. There's a little bit of a peak in the tweeter's response. It's at about Let's see, that's two, three, four, five K Hertz, four to five K Hertz. There's a little bit of a peak. Um, I tamed it a little, uh, not much. I couldn't tame it anymore without going in and putting a whole bunch of parts on it, trying to put a notch filter on it and a bunch of stuff like that. It just really, really wasn't that bad. It's a pretty small peak and in the off axis, it drops off. So that tells me, let it be, no worries. Um, Look at the crossover response. If you look at it before and after, you can see I smooth things out a little, as, you, as I mentioned, when we looked at the on-axis response. Uh, balanced out the tweeter's response a little, made it a little more level. But other than that, it's crossed very similarly to where it was before. Um, it's a fairly low crossover point, but this tweeter is pretty robust and will handle it really well. So very little change there. Um, actually, it's almost at the almost at the same crossover point so no issues there at all uh, what was really good about this speaker 
is the vertical off axis, meaning as you start going up and down, the driver stayed in phase over a really wide range and it maintained a really even response. If you look at the before and you look at the after, you notice it's about the same in that regard. So it hardly changed it any. Uh, same with the horizontal off axis. If you look at the before, you look at the after, they look about the same. Now, one thing I did do is I went in, when I designed a network for it, instead of just putting an inline resistor in line with the tweeter to bring the tweeter level down, which made the impedance a mismatch. So if you look at the impedance response of the factory curve, you can see the tweeter level is much higher impedance than the woofer level. What I did was went in and used an L pad to bring those levels down to where the impedance is more balanced all the way across. So your amplifier sees the same load and it's a little easier to, to drive that way. And um, spectral decay on this thing, super clean, really clean spectral decay. So no ringing, nothing, stored energy. This thing plays and stops, great. Uh, the cabinet um, was fair. I mean, it's it's got one brace running through it about right here. So it's pretty solid there. Um, it's got some foam liner on the inside. I don't know if you can see it through this big hole for the binding post cup, but it's just lined in foam. Uh, if we pull that stuff out of there and line it with no res, it will tighten up a little of the cabinet ring and um, tighten up the bass response a little bit, give it a little cleaner sound. All that's going to come in the kit. I put a little parts package together. It's got one set of tube connectors that will replace one of these sets of binding posts. If you want, you can parallel the old binding posts, so you can use either or, but you really need to get these out of the signal pad. So, tube connectors, all new wiring, good quality parts. Uh, Sonic caps on the tweeter circuit, uh, the RC poly caps on the woofer circuit, large gauge air core inductors on everything, good quality resistors, and all that came up to 285 bucks. So if you guys own one of the Yamos and you want to bring the performance level up quite a bit in clarity, detail, imaging, all those things that are going to equate to getting these parts that create smearing out of the signal path then I've got an easy little package for you. It's an easy upgrade. You guys can have fun with it. There you go. But overall, uh, pretty nice design work on this one. So I've got to give them props for doing a pretty good job. But the budget counters, the, or the bean counters, they hit it pretty hard with, you know, I don't know, $8 worth of parts there, maybe 12. So they left a lot on the table. Good news we can make it a lot better. So that's it for this quick little clip. Uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. Be sure and hit the subscribe button. I've got more videos coming. I'm going to try to shoot another one in a few minutes, a different model. Um, hang in there. Thanks guys.